Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian here at the Royal International Air Tattoo at RAF Fairford in the Gloucestershire countryside. World's number one military air shows with aircraft from around the world including an M346 trainer that's flying, made by uh, Leonardo. But we're over here to talk to Brian Chappell, who's the Senior Vice President uh, at Northrop Grumman for Autonomous uh, Systems. Uh, Brian, thanks very much. Congratulations. You guys have the Firebird uh, aircraft, Thank you. optionally manned. Uh, not only that, you know, you developed this on your own, but now you've got your first customers. So Correct. talk to us a little bit about um, where the contracts, uh, you know, who, who, who you have on order. Because uh, one is commercial, one's a government customer, that's right, that's right. and sort of what's next for the program. So the the, the two customers you mentioned, uh, very excited about them coming on board, uh, placing their uh, deposits. Uh, the uh, first one is uh, 10X Aerospace, uh, government services oriented uh, contractor. They'll be uh, operating the system using its flexibility for a variety of missions, uh, sort of a fee for service basis. Grand Sky, a commercial entity using again the flexibility of the system and all the different missions and payloads it can uh, carry to uh, provide data services for a number of commercial uh, uh, businesses that they have interested. So as you guys uh, look at this uh, program, um, how many aircraft do you foresee on it, right? I mean, uh, you know, Northrop Grumman has been great, especially the Ryan side of the family, for example, right. where Global Hawk uh, came from, uh, you know, the Fire Bee and all of these legendary unmanned aircraft uh, that people have a tendency of forgetting. You know, Vietnam War, right. uh, that was such a critical asset, and it's in the Air Force Museum, in fact. But talk to us about the size of this market, right? Is this a boutique kind of a capability, or do you think that you're going to get kind of a broader run rate on this and sort of get into that market, for example, where the Predator has been trying to work itself into? There, there's, uh, I think, a, because of the flexibility and all of the missions it's able to accomplish, there's going to be a very significant market opportunity, but it's going to be a collection of market opportunities. It won't just be one. So we can talk about commercial, as I, as I just mentioned. There will be fee-for-service opportunities. There will be classic uh, military and government uh, missions. There will be mail opportunities. ISR opportunities, of course, a global capability. Additionally, by being optionally manned, manned missions, missions that have traditionally been manned, can be accomplished along with unmanned right in the same day if uh, a customer wants to be able to reconfigure that fast. And uh, talk to us, because the reconfigurability about it, I think you have about 6, 600 pounds of payload uh, in your bay. Talk to us about how quickly you can reconfigure, the kinds of missions you can do, and what are some of the performance parameters of the airplane, sure. for example, sure. endurance? Yeah. So, as you mentioned, there's a, there's a large payload bay uh, holding up to uh, two 19-inch uh, racks uh, for all manners of equipment. The overall payload capability is 1,700 pounds. Uh, in an unmanned configuration, this is a 30-plus hour aircraft. Uh, manned, it's probably going to be half, 15 to 18 hours along those lines. Uh, this is a, a nominal performance, 25,000 uh, uh, feet. Uh, 135 to 150 knots. Uh, the reconfigurability and uh, the open mission system architecture that's in the system is what gives it so much power and flexibility. We've already demonstrated over 20 different payload types, often flying one set of uh, payloads in the morning, switching them out over lunch, and flying a, another completely different set in the afternoon. That's uh, kind of unprecedented mission flexibility, I think, which is what you guys are uh, shooting for. Um, you know, one question folks have is that this market is getting very crowded. Once upon a time, it was you guys, you know, Abe Karam, of course, with the Predator coming into the scene, and of mm -hmm. course, being now with General Atomics. But now more folks are getting into it. The Googles are getting into the unmanned space. Amazon is, you know, you have Digi, for example, who's, uh, you know, clearly, you know, not there nearly in this class. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you see this market uh, evolving and how you guys maintain that leadership position you sure, guys have had. Sure. So, uh, as you can see from this system, we really went for mission flexibility. So, building the aircraft, building the hardware, understanding how to do autonomous flight, we've been doing that, as you mentioned, well over 20 years on a Global Hawk, going back many decades before on some of the other systems. So then when you take that and apply it to a system like Firebird, where you can go manned, unmanned, super flexibility in, in payloads. Uh, you're providing a, a mission capability to users 
well, others may still be figuring out how to really do autonomous aircraft. Uh, this aircraft leverages all that we've learned from decades of, of that work. It, when it's unmanned, it has the same point and click uh, control approach that uh, uh, Global Hawks uh, have. Uh, it's not a joystick operated aircraft, although if a user wanted to operate it that way, it could do that too. Um, you know, uh, one of the uh, areas where you've had enormous experience is actually changing the global debate about unmanned systems. Um, we've seen, for example, accessibility into Siganella, which has been an issue with the RQ4s. Uh, you guys have been working that. You know, domestic airspace, FAA has become, a Federal Aviation Administration has become a lot more open about it. What do you think are some of the broad policy global issues that governments have to deal with as this new autonomous age is upon us? You know, we're talking about air taxis. Folks are talking about, you know, you know guys want to deliver pizzas with it. You guys are looking to deliver these kinds of services on a, on a larger scale. What's the way governments need to think about this space as the, you know, because the future is actually here, and, and you guys have been fighting this battle now for, for almost 20 years. Right. They, it, 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 it's, it's very interesting to, to watch, as with all things, when, when technology emerges and starts uh, creating opportunities that didn't exist before, often other elements of the environment have to adjust to make sure that we realize the, the full benefit. Of course, we've got to do it safely, always have to do it safely. Uh, and I think the governments around the world are recognizing it to, to varying degrees, are moving forward thoughtfully to be able to create the opportunities to be able to uh, uh, use these systems as effectively as they can. Is there a lot of work still to do? Absolutely. Continue to be engaged with, with all the governments that are working on this to make sure we end up with really good outcomes. And uh, last question. Um, this particular demonstration is going on a little longer than I thought it was going to. Um, one last question, which is um, the amount of investment you guys put into this. I know that's a question. I know a lot of this stuff is proprietary. But can you give the audience some sort of indication about how much you invested in this, you know, given that this is you know, your kind of investment, and what it tells us about the kind of investments you'll be making for the future? Okay. Um, I won't get into the specifics of, of, of the investment, but it has been a very good uh, uh, activity for us for several years to be able to do this. We were able to do it from the ground up, thinking carefully, investing where we needed to, to create the capability and the flexibility that we, that we have here. We're now putting it into service. We're excited about being able to do that. And we'll continue to make investments. As this goes out and starts getting used, we're going to learn. We'll be taking uh, that learning, applying additional uh, investment to bring the capability up even further and keep it moving. Brian, I, I just have to tell you, it's uh, amazing. Congratulations. Thank it's always much. great to come Appreciate to an air show it. and seeing a company that has a vision of the future invest to try to make it real. Look forward to covering more orders with it and best of luck on the program. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much.